I'm sitting in Virasana on a block. So ideally, Virasana on the block, the feet are pointed back, big toes point straight back, center of the knee points straight ahead. I have just a little gap in between the knees. And I bring my hands to the sacrum and the lower belly, and I grow upright through my spine. The chest is open, palms up on the thighs, close the eyes. So in the seated meditation, focus on the breath, center yourself physically, center yourself over your sit bones so you're not rocked forward or back. Align the head as if the two hemispheres of the brain could be balanced up over the sit bones. Feel how adjusting the physical has an internal shift. By balancing yourself physically, feel how the brain feels more balanced. Calm yourself by watching the breath. Soothe the mind by watching the breath. Now visualize your lungs as having three parts, a bottom third, a middle, and a top. Allow the bottom third of the lungs to expand, then pause. Allow the middle of the lungs to expand, pause. Allow the top lungs to expand evenly on both sides. Pause and let all the air out. Again, bottom lungs, pause. Middle, pause, top, pause, let the air out. Go back to normal breathing. And open your eyes. Spread your arms out to the side. Continue to balance yourself over your sit bones. Release across the back of the neck, spread across the collarbones. Increase the wingspan. Then turn the arms so that the thumbs point back. Still increase the wingspan, raise the arms halfway. Feel how the neck starts to retract, lift, spread again. Sit tall up over the sit bones, turn the thumbs, raise the arms up all the way. Create the space of the neck again, reach past your fingers, then bring your arms back down. Come onto the hands and the knees, move the block to your side. Oh, and prop wise, I get a lot of comments uh, requesting that I share which props we'll be using. I always recommend when you practice that you have your props nearby. I always have a couple of blocks, a strap, and a blanket nearby. So I recommend having those whenever you're gonna start doing a yoga video. Place your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. As you inhale, start to wheel the pelvis into a back bend shape, then the middle back, upper, and neck. As you exhale, again, lead with the pelvis, tuck under, then low back, middle, neck. Again, inhale, start with the pelvis. Exhale, curl under again. Inhale with the pelvis, then low, middle, upper back. Exhale with the pelvis. Low, middle, upper, neck. One more time. Then come into neutral. Knees are close together. Stretch your left leg back behind you. Try not to let the hips twist. Draw the navel in. Send the right arm forward. Reach through the inner heel, reach past the fingertips. Then lower the hand and the knee down. Inhale the right leg back behind you. Try not to let the hips twist. Send the left arm forward. Instead of tensing around the neck, draw the low abs in. Keep the length through the spine like when you're practicing seated meditation. Lower back down. Inhale left leg, right arm. Exhale lower down. Inhale, right leg, left arm. Exhale, lower down. Sit back in a child's pose. Take a breath. 
Inhale up on the hands and knees. Exhale lower down onto your belly. Modified Chaturanga. Inhale into low cobra. Exhale lower the chest. Push up on the hands and knees with the navel in. Collarbones broad. Glide back. Child's pose. Again, inhale up on the hands and knees. Navel in, chest open, lower slowly, consciously to elbow height. Keep the length of the spine, then lie all the way down. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, lower chest. Navel in, press to plank. Downward, uh, back to child. Last one, inhale, come up. Navel in, roll the chest forward. Lower slowly, don't let the chest collapse. Lie on your belly. Inhale, low cobra. This time, modified low cobra, lift the legs up an inch. Press the frontal hip bones down, draw the navel in. Turn your elbows towards each other. Engage the back of the outer armpit. Feel the neck lengthen, low back lengthen, upper spine moves in. Then lower down. Press up, hands and knees. And this time we'll go into down dog. So take your feet hip distance apart, hands shoulder distance apart. Stretch the backs of the legs, open up the hands. Upper arm bones are seeking external rotation. Thigh bones looking for neutral. So effort of internal rotation of the inner upper thigh, of the thigh bone, to find neutral. Breathe length into your spine again. And then one more stability exercise, shift into plank pose. Bring your feet close together, roll your chest forward, then lift your right leg up just an inch. Draw your navel in, lengthen your spine. Change legs, lift the left leg up just an inch. Chest forward. Set that leg down. Bring the right knee up to the right elbow. Keep your spine long. Send it back. Left knee to the left elbow. Send it back. Right knee to left armpit. Twist in your middle. Send it back. Left knee to right armpit. Send it back, downward dog. Then walk your feet up to the top of the mat, bend the knees slightly and fold forward. If your hamstrings are really tight, locking your knees and folding forward will cut off the stretch. So if your hamstrings are really tight, I'd rather you bend your knees so you can get your pelvis to tip over your thighs so you can get this forward down movement. Then once you feel the hamstrings starting to open, instead of pushing your shins or your knees back, notice how I resist my shins forward. Actually, let's all do this. Put your hands to the backs of your calves and see if you can lift your hips up higher up over your heels without your calves pressing back. Tighten from above the kneecaps, pull up. Don't let the calves press back. Then bring your hands to your hips. Come all the way up to stand. I got a little faucet I searched right before this. All right, so stand up tall with the feet together. Balance yourself up over your ankles. And let's try that one more time. Bend your knees just slightly. Now, instead of pushing your shins back to straighten your legs, start to lift the muscles from above the kneecaps. Imagine you could draw from your arches up through your inner kneecaps, all the way up through the core of the spine, through your head. And as you exhale, you'll let the back of the neck release down, all the way down into the heels. Press down. Then raise your arms up as you inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. If your hamstrings are tight, you can bend your knees. Step back into plank pose. 
Lower to Chaturanga. Lie on your belly. Inhale into Low Cobra. Spread wide across the upper chest. Thighs in a neutral rotation. Press into Up Dog. Roll the chest forward and up. Glide back to Down Dog. Holding your Down Dog. Breathe through your nose. Bend your knees and look forward. Step or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up, raise your arms. Exhale, your arms to your side. One more modification. For tight shoulders, you can use blocks and keep the hands on blocks when you practice the flow. So I'm going to be showing that today as well. It's the little modification for the knees. Inhale your arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Then I put the hands on the blocks like I'm shaking a hand. Wood blocks work best. Step into plank pose. Lower into chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. So this just gives you a little bit of height. If the shoulders and the upper back are tight, this can help you to, so the hands don't have to go as low, it changes the angle of the postures. Bend the knees and look forward. Jump or step. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Press into the feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, the hands to the heart. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Bend the knees. Jump or step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Press down, inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, the hands to your heart. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Arda, flat back. Step back and lower Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Then shift to plank pose. Pull your right knee up to your chest and round out. Step your foot all the way up close to your right thumb. Adjust your back heel like a warrior one back heel. Then take a few breaths up on your fingertips to start to stretch the back heel down towards the floor. Make sure that you're not jamming the shin, but instead, as the heel reaches, lift from above the kneecap. Then draw your navel in, float your arms back behind you. Keep stretching in your back heel. I'm not as interested if this front leg bends deeply, I'm more interested in the stretch of the back leg. Come straight up through the midline, warrior one. Bring the hands back down. Step to plank pose. Lower chaturanga. Lift straight back up, plank. Pull your left knee up. Step your foot all the way up to your thumb. Adjust the back heel. Start to stretch through the back heel down into the mat. Back foot's turning a little more than 45 degrees. Up on the fingertips, keep stretching without jamming the knee. Instead, Lift from above the kneecap to straighten the leg. Then navel in as the arms float back. Really reach and stretch through the heel and the toe mounds on the back foot. Then come straight up through the midline. Raise your arms. Bring your hands back down. Step back. Chaturanga, lower slow. Back up, plank. Dog pose. Bend the knees, look forward, jump or step. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees, sit your hips back, raise your arms up. Press all the way up to stand. Bring your hands to your heart. So for these B salutations, instead of doing up dog, I'm gonna practice a chaturanga push-up to help build strength for the upper chest. But it's really important when you do this so you don't let your shoulder heads turn in. So I rec strongly recommend looking in a mirror and making sure the shoulders don't do this when you lower down. That's just gonna strengthen your neck and you don't wanna do that when you practice. You wanna keep the chest open so the upper chest gets strong and developed. All right, you can also do up dog if you're not that into that. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back and lower, chaturanga. Keep the chest open, press straight back up. Downward facing dog. Step the right foot, turn the back heel. Warrior one, raise the arms up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, plank. Exhale, dog. Step the left foot all the way up. Turn the back heel. Warrior one, strong in your core. Draw the navel in as you reach the arms. Bring the hands down. Step back, chaturanga. Plank, dog. Breathe through your nose again. Take the feet hip distance apart. Spread the toes. Bend the knees, look forward, jump or step up. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Press up to stand, hands to your heart. Again, inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Press back up, downward dog. Step your right foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Plank, down dog. Step the left foot, warrior one. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, chaturanga. Plank. Dog pose. Hold in your down dog. All right, so this next one, we're gonna need the hands flat. Turn your thumbs out just slightly. So there's a little rotation on the wrist. Wrist isn't all the way parallel to the front of the mat. Rotate your inner upper arms forward. So from this position, the arm is safely externally rotated. From here, we're gonna to roll to the outer edge of the right foot. Keep spinning the arm as you open your chest up. So we teach this as the safest way to move in and out of side plank now. Not that it can't be done from plank, but you see that the arm is able to hold its external rotation a lot better. Open up the chest, reach through the right hand, engage your core as you stretch your legs. Then come back, dog pose, downward facing. Keep the rotation of the upper arm, especially the left one. Watch the arm stay rotating externally as you spin to the outer foot. Then take the right arm up. Balance the hips. Bring the right hip up on top of the left. Then start to open your chest. Engage your core, especially the low abs as you stretch the legs longer. Come back to plank pose. All right, now just for experimentation's sake, let's see what happens when we go to it from plank. Roll to your right foot. See if you can still find the external rotation. Was it better or worse than when you did it from down dog? I don't feel it quite as well as when I do it from down dog, but feeling your body. Back to plank. Go to the outer edge of the left foot. 
So we want to think of the practice kind of like a laboratory, like we're doing experiments with the body. We see what works for the body, what doesn't work. All the poses that I do in this video might not be right for your body. So you have to start to be more conscious. The longer you practice, you'll be more aware. Come back to plank pose. Pull your right knee up to your chest. Step your foot all the way up in between your hands. Wiggle it up, then lower the knee down. Point the toes back. Bring your hands to your right knee and start to upright yourself. So for this stretch, we're gonna to try to lengthen the psoas by drawing the navel in as you lengthen through the inner leg. Then take your left arm up and overhead. Then bring your arms back down, curl the back toes under, lift the back knee, turn the back heel down, have a block handy. Come up for warrior two. Straighten your right leg, adjust your stance so it's about four feet apart. We're gonna do the same actions on the back leg today. So flow the back, the left groin down as you draw the low abs up. The right thigh turns out and we'll bend the knee, tracking the knee with the second toe, spread the arms. As you keep flowing the left groin down into the big toe mount, make sure you're not jamming your left knee. The muscles from above the left knee lift, the groin flows down. Bend your right knee. Breathe steady. Keep the length of the back leg as you reach out over your right leg and put your hand down. Take your left arm up and overhead. Seek to find a long line from the back inner heel through the spine through the fingertips. Stay connected to the breath. Don't let the right knee twist in. Turn it back against the right arm. Bring your left hand down, spin your back heel up. Step back into down dog, or do a chaturanga push up, and then press back to down dog. Step your left foot all the way up, lower your back knee down. Point the toes back, bring your hands to your left knee and start to upright yourself. Stretch down to the right shin. As the low abs draw into the front of the spine, Start to lengthen the right inner leg longer. Iliopsoas lengthening down to the inner knee, up to the navel at the same time. Then take the right arm up and overhead, find a long line through the deep front body line while starting from the knee and working your way up. Also incorporate the rest of the leg, the shin through the big toes lengthening. Then bring your hands down Curl the back toes, lift the back knee, turn the back heel down, have a block handy. Come up for warrior two. Straighten your left leg, adjust your feet so they're four feet apart. You have a nice long stance. Grow tall through your spine like when you do mountain. Keep the reach of the back foot, the length of the psoas, the navel, as you start to bend the left knee. The left thigh works in external rotation to find neutral in this pose. Just like in warrior one, I'm not as interested how deep you sit into the pose. Today, I'm more interested if you can keep the stretch of the back leg and then start to bend this knee. Steady your breath like the beginning of the class. Then reach out over the left leg, place the hand down, take the right arm up and over. Anchor again into your back leg without jamming the knee. From above the kneecap you lift, keep stretching evenly into the foot.
Then take the arm back up, bring your hand down, spin the back heel up. Step back to down dog. Look in between your hands, step your right foot up to your right thumb. Come up on your fingertips, pin your right hip in, draw your navel in, float the arms back. Now really stretch long through the back inner leg. Keep a long line through your spine so you're not rounding over. Shoulders are broad, like in Chaturanga. Ground into the center of the right heel and step up for warrior three. Lengthen the back inner leg as you grow long through your spine. Then bend the right knee, take a big step back into crescent, arms come up and overhead. Bring the hands to your heart, navel in as you lean your chest out over your knee, then twist to your right. Bring the hands down, step back, lower chaturanga, press straight back up, dog pose. Step the left foot all the way up, come up on the fingertips, track the left hip with the left ankle, draw the navel in as the arms float back. Preparation for warrior three. Be right into the center of the left heel without letting the left hip twist out, without letting the hips open up to the right, lean forward, step up to balance on your left leg. Same work, as the low abdominals draw into the front of the spine, stretch the inner back leg longer. Grow the spine longer. Then bend the left knee, take a big step back, crescent, inhale your arms up. Twist, hands to prayer, lean out over the knee. Then bring your hands down. Instead of stepping back this time, walk the hands around in between your feet. Parallel your feet. Inhale, make a flat back. As you exhale, walk the hands back, let the head drop down. Then inhale again, flat back. Roll the chest forward. Bring your hands to your outer hips. Come all the way up to stand. For this next one, I recommend your strap. If you don't have a strap, you can just use a shirt, a dish towel, a towel, whatever you got. But I'm gonna hold the strap, shoulder distance apart, behind my back. This is important because when we bind, we want the shoulders to turn back. If the hands interlace, there's a tendency for the shoulders to roll in. So we're just gonna practice like this today. Turn the shoulders, draw the middle back in. Then fold forward in between your legs again. This 
So instead of hardening the soles of the feet, open the arches all the way up, connect up through the spine, let the spine lengthen, let the arms stretch up and over. Then press down into your feet, inhale, come back up. Then we're gonna see if the hands will go into prayer position in the upper back. If that's too much on the wrist, then you could just do knuckles together in your upper back. Turn the legs to the right, left leg turns in a little more than halfway, right leg turns all the way out. Lift from above the back kneecap as you stretch the inner leg at the same time. That's confusing, how can I draw up and down at the same time? But that's yoga. Open your chest and then start to lengthen all the way out over your leg. Let the pelvis glide over the femur bone on the right leg. If you're very tight in your hamstrings, remember the lesson from the beginning of class, just bend your knee a little bit, that'll help you to tip the pelvis. If the hamstrings are very flexible, lift strong from above the knees, bring the head down. Then inhale, come back up, turn to the other side, press your back heel, open your chest, and then start to lengthen out over your left leg. Remember, you could bend the knee slightly so that you get this nice movement of the spine. See if you can start to work from above the knees, pull up as you root into your feet, draw the navel in and lengthen all the way out over your left leg. Let your breath circulate fluids through the body to help to open up the tissues that feel tight. Don't overdo, don't overstrain. Unclench the jaw, the tongue. And come all the way up to stand. For the peak of the standing sequence, bring your feet together and stand tall. Keep yourself upright, erect over the left ankle as you bring your right knee up. Then take your right big toe, stretch it out in front of you. Don't let yourself tuck your butt under. See if you can keep the pelvis balanced over the left ankle as the right leg goes towards straight. Remember, if you're really tight in the back of the leg, don't jam it straight by tucking under. See if you can keep the length and breathe the leg towards straight. Then change hands and twist. So I first see if I can get my spine upright and then I stretch this leg towards straight. Look forward, take your arms up, stretch your right leg straight out in front of you. Might not go up as high as mine, don't let yourself tuck under. Lift up tall over your left ankle. Lower your leg down, bring your arms down. Side B, press the right foot down, bring the left knee up, take the left big toe. Then start to breathe the leg towards straight. Bring the right hand to the outside of the foot. If the leg won't go straight, no worries. Keep working on the upright quality over the right leg. See if you can breathe the left leg towards straight without tucking under. Look forward, take your arms up, take the leg straight out in front of you. Lower your leg down, bring your arms down. Stand up tall. Raise the arms up and overhead, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to down dog. Then set your knees down. And we're gonna set up for down dog on the forearms. So I'm gonna use the block in between my hands with the thumbs pointing up. Place the center elbow in line with the center shoulder. Draw the navel in, press the forearms down, curl the toes under, lift your knees up.
Now see if you can walk your feet in closer without rounding your shoulders. Turn the outer shoulders back, spread the collarbones. Pin the outer hips without the hips twisting, raise the right leg up. Change legs. Pin the hips, lift the left leg up. Lower that leg, set the knees down, sit in Virasana like we started, or child's pose, your call. All right, preparation for Adamukha Vrikshasan. Sit with your buttocks up against the wall. Stretch the legs out. Sit up straight and tall, as upright as you can over your sit bones. Then take one arm forward and then the other. Imagine you're being pulled up through a hair on top of your head. Descend the thigh bones, then raise the arms up. You want the whole spine to feel like it's being pulled up as the inner sit bones descend. Don't let the spine sink, especially in your lower back. If you have this shape comfortably, you're able to keep the neck relaxed, able to keep the lift of the spine, and then turn the hands like you're doing a handstand. If this pose is coming well, then you're going to practice this shape upside down. If this pose isn't coming well, it wouldn't make sense to try to take it upside down. It would just get worse. So notice that the low back is in. I have a nice tadasana line through my spine, 90 degree angle. Okay, bring your hands back down. So for round two, you're going to practice that pose on the hands. Or if you're just working on getting your hamstrings to be open, then you're just going to work on this shape again. All right, so for the next shape, I put my hands right where the heels were. And then one foot at a time, I'm going to step up to the wall. I'm going to see if I can get the spine to lengthen again. Stretch the legs. For more challenge, take one leg up. And then the other. And then come back down. So just feel the effects of the inversion if you went up. If you didn't go up, feel how strengthening, how good it was for your body just to practice sitting in that 90 degree angle with your arms up. All right. Now come onto the hands and the knees. We're going to do another psoas stretch or quad stretch. So right foot comes up to the right thumb. Scoot the left knee back until you start to feel a stretch. If you feel a deep stretch, then just stay there. If you're only at like a three, you want to start to kick it up to a six, then bring the left foot up. This is on a made up scale. I just made up of one to 10 of how you're going to stretch. So from here, Drag the kneecap away from you as you move your pelvis towards your right heel. Feel the stretch in the lower quadriceps. If you're still not satisfied, you don't even feel a middle of the way stretch, then you'll lift up a bit and grab the foot. But remember, no two bodies are alike. Listen to your body and make sure you're doing the stretch that feels most appropriate for you. I can still breathe in this shape. The face is relaxed. If I've done a bunch of hiking, I'd probably just stay at phase two of the pose. So just know what you've done for the last few days, how the body's feeling, if you've been stretching a lot or not. Then release that foot, 
Let's go to the other side. Left foot steps forward, right foot steps back. So start phase one. For a lot of bodies, this is a great stretch to stay in, especially if you don't practice yoga regularly. Regularly meaning five or six days a week. Stay here, or if you'd like to move to phase two so that you can find the middle of the road stretch, shouldn't feel super intense. Stay there or go for phase three. Then release your foot and come to seated Dandasana. Stretch the legs straight out, sit up tall, draw your low abs in and up, lean yourself back 30 degrees, pull the heels in from the low abs, don't let the chest collapse. Again from the low abs, lift the feet up. From the low abs, take the legs all the way up. From the low abs, take one arm forward and the other common theme here is the low abs. Then set your feet down, Ardha Navasana, lower down onto your back. Start with the legs in tabletop, bring your fingers behind your ears. All right, so already turn on the low abs. Then crunch the upper abs. Instead of from your neck, see if you can use your abs to crunch up. Oh, so much harder. Send one leg forward. Ooh, crunch your abs. Change legs. Crunch those abs tight. Change legs. Change legs. Send both legs out ooh, and hold for five. And lower down, hug your knees in. And then open your arms up to the side. Take your feet the width of the mat and let your knees fall over to the left. To intensify the stretch, Cross your left ankle on the outside of your right knee. Back up. Change sides. Take the right angle to the outside of the left knee. Back up, hug both knees into your chest. Let the lower back spread and release. And take happy baby.
Hug your knees to your chest. Roll up to seated. Cross your legs at the shins. Or, if the outer hips are more flexible, take double pigeon. Start to tip yourself forward. Keep the feet as if they're pressing into walls. Inner and outer feet, especially reach to the inner feet, inner ankles. Draw the navel in away from the shins so that the lower back can spread. Come back up. Change the cross of the legs. Come back up. Stretch both legs straight out in front of you. Raise your arms up and overhead. And then reach for your feet. Come back up and lie down onto your back. Adjust the shoulder blades so that the chest can open again. Adjust the pelvis into neutral. Stretch the legs out. Let the feet spread open. Turn the palms so you're resting on the middle finger knuckle. Let the body drop.
And take a slightly deeper, fuller breath. And let it out. Bend the knees. Roll over to the right side. Press yourself up to seated. Cross your legs and sit up tall. Join the palms together. And with your eyes closed, again, go in. Notice how the body feels, the sensation in the body. Notice how much more balanced your mind feels. Then bow the head to the heart, being grateful for the time to practice. Lift the head and open the eyes.